Hello, and welcome back to A History of Saps, Blackjacks, and Slungshots. So, as I mentioned last time, a uh, video link below if you want to go in order. Uh, I want to start looking at individual samples from my uh, collection here, see what we can learn about them. So, we're going to stick with saps because, as you remember, those are the oldest category in our kind of weapons family tree. And this guy here in particular is probably the oldest one I own, and might in fact be quite old. So, let's see what we can figure out about it. I'm going to call this here a classic American frontier era sap. Now, the word sap pertaining to a weapon started around the turn of the 20th century. And back then it could mean any kind of a stick, any kind of a club. It probably came from sapling, you know, as in like a, a branch from a, a young tree or something like that that was used as a club. That makes things confusing from a research standpoint, but it is what it is, right? Uh, later on, though, it did kind of come to apply specifically to, you know, our saps, basically, right? A quick reminder, this is the only modern one you're going to see. This, uh, by the way, it's from D3 Protection, and uh, this is my favorite sap. But uh, it's modern, but it has a real classic outline, so I like to use it as an example. So sap was kind of a, uh, a catch-all term later for our kinds of weapons. And uh, back then, this is like 1930s, original, hard-boiled detective novel, that kind of thing. You had some fun uh, usages because you could be sapped by a sap man, and you could be sapped down, or like sapped down. Um, and there's even a theory that the name may be applied to the sound, you know, kind of the swish and bang, bang, kind of sapped. Could be, uh, nobody really knows. So, here's another example of a sap. And remember, a sap is kind of a weighted container of any kind, right? Used as a weapon. And let's get back to this one here. So there's a, uh, there's a book called Heart of Oak about the British Navy around the time of Admiral Nelson. And, you know, he was in the Napoleonic era. He died in 1805. In that book, there's an example of a sailor's slung shot slash blackjack. Because remember, we've got a rope handle here, which is kind of the defining feature, really, of a slung shot. And anyway, there's an example from some museum in that book of an item dated to Admiral Nelson's time, and it has really this exact same form of construction. Slightly different shape, but the exact same form of construction that we're gonna examine in a second. So this guy here could actually be from the 1700s. The antique house I got it from dated it to, you know, around there, but these are so imprecise, it's really hard to tell. And the bottom line is this is a practically ancient as far as, you know, saps that you can actually acquire. So, speaking of that construction, let's take a look. See the rope there, right? Now you see the rope fiber? See how it keeps peeking out through the leather? It's been spliced so that it affixes the handle to the weapon, right? That's the method of attachment, which is really interesting. And you'll notice it doesn't go all the way around, right? This is all smooth leather there. So the stitching really only goes around, say, like 60% of the weapon. That causes a kind of unique outline here. You see that? This is something you'll recognize in really old saps and some moderns. So that kind of 60% coverage, whatever you want to call it, that gives the frontier saps kind of their distinctive shape often. And the rope, as you can see, has another leather sleeve right around the handle, maybe just to make it easier to grab, maybe to pre protect the rope from fraying, but that's also a common feature you'll see, and it's... Uh, not necessary at all. Sometimes the rope will just trail off, of course. And then often there'll be a loop here for the hand. But this one doesn't have that loop for the hand, does it? It has this really distinctive feature. This is quite notable. In old saps, I, I can't easily think of another one that, where I've seen this. This one has this metal hook. So, just like with the modern examples, you know, that have hooks, it's probably so you can clip it onto your belt, that kind of thing. This might have been like a lawman in the early 1800s, something like that, attaches this to his belt walks around and it's, you know, just one quick pull away from being ready for action. Could conceivably used to hang from like a rail behind a bar or something like that. And I say that because hanging a sap behind a bar is a time-honored tradition. It's been around from like the Wild West saloons probably before and made it, in some cases, even to like the 1980s. In the 60s it was quite common. So, regardless, this is a method of attachment, of course. It's pretty rare to find one of these, especially this kind of like rope-based more sailorly, if you will, slung shot slash blackjack. To see one with something like that is pretty strange. Now, this guy here had a very big surprise for me. It's a lot of fun. Uh, it really did. I was very excited to get this because these don't come up very often. It's in good shape considering how old it is. I would love to know exactly how old it is. But the strange thing is, 
Once it arrived in the mail, I was just shocked. I picked it up, you know, out of the box, and the weapon portion is all but weightless. I mean, it really it could not be lighter. I assumed that there was no load whatsoever in there. And, you know, that left me wondering what the deal was with this thing. So I came up with a bunch of theories. I was like, well, one, maybe this was just kind of a prototype, right? Kind of a leather guy, knot guy came up with this to prove that he could do it. Then he started actually packing them and selling them. Could be. I also thought, well, maybe the customer who ordered this was just a nice guy. Didn't want to hurt anybody. So he wanted a really light sap. And, you know, these things were made custom order. Uh, custom order, they, <laughs> these did not come off of the assembly line by any stretch, right? These are artisanal weapons for the most part, at least until later in the 20th century. So that could be it. Then I thought maybe it's a pain compliance tool. So what is a pain compliance tool? Pain compliance tool is a tool that forces you to comply via the use of pain, right? So it used to be quite common with uh, law enforcement, not quite as tolerated by society anymore. But sure, it could be that like a sheriff or somebody like that, a constable had this in the old days. And if he found some youths misbehaving, you know, stealing all the sarsaparilla or whatever, he'd whip up on them a few times with this. And this does sting, even though it's so light, even through clothing. And, uh, you know, that's a good indication maybe of how this was used because it is, it's just so light. But then I started thinking, well, it's also a possibility that when you're in serious need, this becomes the striking end, which would be really nasty. There's actually no covering whatsoever. And this is the handle and that would work just fine. Uh, I like the thought of the uh, designer coming up with something that that clever, but I don't know if that's the case, and in fact, I don't think so, after some, some more experimenting. Here's a much better view, by the way, of the sleeve. You see the stitching there? So, after pondering this for a while, I finally did something pretty stupid. I just uh, smacked myself in the head with the damn thing. So, you know, at some point, you just gotta know. So I did, and I was just flat out shocked. This thing has a load in there, and it must be just incredibly tiny. I, one ounce? I don't know. But there is metal in there. I have no idea what it's surrounded by. It's so light, it doesn't even feel like sand. And this is small even by sap standards, but it's such a light weapon, and it swings so freely because of the rope, you know, kind of slung shot construction, that it gets the job done. And I was just really surprised at uh, how much it hurt. So kind of makes you re-examine these a little bit. You know, is this... Like, little thing here, a better weapon than this monster here, which we're going to talk about in a future video. Uh, maybe. Could be. You know, speed counts for a lot in a fight, and you can certainly get this going with almost no effort whatsoever. You don't need any startup momentum. You know, if you swing a baseball bat uh, to defend yourself, you have to load up or it's almost useless before you swing. This here, and you know, this would be kind of like the baseball bat version of a sap, uh, this guy here, it would be like throwing the fastest, lightest swing you possibly could. And that's gonna be much easier to land in a sparring match or a fight or whatever. And once it lands home, it's really gonna surprise somebody. Uh, so that could be what's going on here. Could have just been a lack of materials, I don't know. I don't know if it's indicative of these being lighter in the old days than they are now. That could be, but I definitely know some examples from way back when where the more criminal types, you know, carried nice heavy ones because they wanted to make sure it was a one-shot, you know, sleep aid. So I don't know, but not only is this the oldest one I have, and possibly the only one from the uh, 18th century, uh, but it also really uh, made me rethink these and kind of defied expectations about how light one can be while still being effective. Thank you.